closest to me. Um, there's more and more modular building going on these days, so uh, somebody asked how we would actually document and illustrate uh, the, the uh, modular construction of various projects. Um, so I've just kind of quickly laid out a hypothetical floor plan here, um, assuming that maybe modular widths are about 12 feet, just taking my best guess, having never worked on one before. Um, but I'd like to use this to illustrate how we could put together a modular floor plan and modular documents using ARCHICAD. Um, so the, the first thing I've set up is uh, just modeled this, this really rudimentary floor plan, and this could be as detailed or simple as, as it needed to be for your purposes. Um, but I've modeled walls and slabs for these three different portions of the project. Um, and I've also set up, if I go into my property manager here, uh, a system of modular types, so mo module number, uh, to say that elements are part of module 1, module 2, or module 3. Um, from there, I can go into those elements and uh, actually apply that module number um, in the settings of the walls, the slabs, the various components um, related to that module. Um, so here, the centerpiece is module number one, uh, the south wing of the project is assigned to module number two, and then the north wing is assigned to module number three. Um, now, one suggestion that I had uh, from a client that I thought was great was to build in graphic overrides to quickly say, I want to know what those modules look like. So I have some graphic override rules to say that if, uh, if it's a zone, it's going to be transparent. Uh, if it's part of module number one, uh, we're going to turn the fill to 25%. If it's part of module number two, we're going to turn it to 50%. If it's part of module number three, it'll have a, a hatch pattern. Uh, and what that allows me to do, uh, assigning that, I can quickly graphically illustrate the different modules of the project. Uh, and that graphic override can apply to cover fills, cut fills, or drafting fills. Um, in this case, I only want to differentiate what's been cut through. Uh, so I can take this a step further and actually blow this model apart a little bit using hotlink modules. Uh, so if I select these and copy them to the clipboard, Command C, and go File, Save As, um, and then I can, let's just put this on the desktop, and we're going to call this Module 3. Oh, that's the wrong format. Let's go File, Save As one more time. Um, not DWG, we're going to save this as a module from the clipboard. Module 3, 4, whatever. Uh, let's grab this one down here and copy that to the clipboard, Save As. Um, module 2, and then grabbing the center stuff here, copy and save as um, module 1. Um, now what that allows me to do is place those as hotlink modules uh, to basically document them independently of each other. So I can design them as a single building uh, and then place them to be documented uh, essentially as a block. So under external content, place hotlink, uh, select the module from a file, and I'm going to place module number one here, uh, place all stories, select, um, we should have a dedicated module layer, uh, and again that allows me to potentially turn these on and off if I had built this into the layer combination as well. Um, in this case let's just use uh, the ARCHICAD layer um, I can always go in and change that later on. Um, and let's put it in the center of this view. So there's my module number one. We'll group that together. Uh, and let's just go ahead and carry this through to the layer level as well. Like I said, we can uh, create a new layer. We'll call this module one. Uh, new layer, call this uh, module two. And a new layer, and call this module three and say OK. Um, I can select that module now and go to File, External Content, uh, Hotlink Selection Settings, and change the layer of that to Module 1. Um, now I can come into File, External Content, and place the remaining modules. Place Hotlink Module um, from File, and I'm just going to grab Module Number 2, Place, OK. There's my second module, and you can see that that graphic override automatically applies to this as well. Um, and that also gives me a little bit of freedom to kind of rearrange and, and play with this a bit like a jigsaw puzzle um, uh, and assign and, and relocate these modules. It will also allow me, if I had two modules that were the same, to say that these are identical modules and I can drag a copy of it and rotate it around, and uh, there I can use module number two for both, both pieces. 
Um, or if that module is different, I can go in and, and uh, go to uh, my external content, hot link module settings, and change that module to be uh, what I saved accidentally as module four. And now that's going to reassign to module four. Let's just replace it here. There we go. Um, so now I have that module four. Um, and because I've baked this into the layers as well, I can now create layer combinations to isolate out um, the other modules. So I can, for example, document just module number three. Um, again, going into file, external content, hot link settings change this to the module 3 layer, um, this one, file, external content, link settings, change that to the module 2 layer. Um, so I can isolate out just module 3, um, module 3 and 2, any combination basically uh, as appropriate to the documentation. Um, so that's kind of how I would approach um, designing uh, and documenting a modular building um, for, for easy separation of the modules into separate construction components um, and verification of the shop drawings. I uh, hope that was helpful. Um, that's all for now.